All right, we're going to go over the difference between a blocked practice and an interleaved practice, which sort of form two ends of a spectrum. In a blocked practice, I'm going to pick, for example, one skill, and I'm going to work on that skill for one training session. And then I'm going to pick another skill, work on that for a full training session. Or it could be even just 20 minutes for one skill, 20 minutes for the next skill. So for example, I'll work on my arm drag, I'll work on a Delaheva sweep, and I'll work on a guillotine pass. I'll be doing my arm drag for a long period of time, one full block. And then I'll work on my Delaheva sweep for a long period of time and my guillotine pass for a long period of time. As opposed to a interleaved practice where I'm gonna switch up between these ideas constantly. Okay, so I'll do one or a few of my guillotine pass and then I'll switch it randomly to one or a few of my Delaheva passes uh, and then arm drag and so forth. It doesn't have to be three and there is no exact time uh, constraints on these. Those are just the general ideas, okay? Now, research, more modern research has been showing that an interleaved practice leads to better, more long-term durable learning, which really is, should be our goal, is to actually get good in the long-term, all right? Now, the reason that this is suggested to be the case is in the interleaved practice, I'm going to take the details of an arm drag and I'm gonna put those into my short-term memory, okay? So I'm gonna find that chunk, throw it in my mind. I have, you know, I go through a sequence, and then I switch on my next rep or after a couple reps, once it's easy for me, I switch up to my Delaheva sweep. And then I have to recall that information. So I clear out my short-term memory and throw in a new chunk. And then I recall the next thing. So I wanna work on my guillotine pass. I throw that in there, I work on those details. And once I get it down just enough, I switch again. And I just keep going through those for a period of time, right? Again, three is arbitrary, it could be way more, it could be two. Now, as opposed to block practice. Block practice, I'm picking one thing and I'm getting it down, all right? Research has shown that if you perform block practice, at the end of a practice session, you feel as though you've gotten much better at that one skill, and you have for the short term. But most research shows that that is just as fleeting as the period, like you gained quickly and you lose it just as quickly, all right? Another key detail here is by the end of a block practice session, if you're watching students or you're looking at your own um, performance, you're gonna be like, man, I got this down. And you're gonna look at the people who are interleaving and you're gonna be like, man, they are super sloppy, all right? That is, a fact from the majority of studies that have been done on these two opposing um, approaches to training. But when it came down to testing uh, in the future, the people who did the interleaved practice perform much better on those tests. And it's believed to be because they are more accustomed to recalling that information into their short term memory and they practice that act much more frequently than those doing the blocked practice. All right. The cognitive effort in the interleaved practice proved to be greater and that is likely to be the reason that the interleave practice becomes more effective at that long-term durable learning. Of course, this means that sometimes block practice can be useful because it comes down to that level of cognitive effort required in the training. You don't want too much, you don't want too little. So if you need to learn a new skill you've never done before, it might require some form of block practice. If you're working on something super intricate, it may require some block practice. But this idea of interleaving your training, it's relatively new. Um, and again, there haven't been a ton of studies done on this, but the studies that have been done show a lot of promise in this interleaving practice. If you consider when you're rolling, you encounter a novel situation on, on a super frequent basis and you need to recall your information and you know, fire on that arm drag right away. You're not just gonna be doing like 10 arm drags and then on the 11th one is when you're actually gonna do it in an actual roll. You're gonna have to call these things um, up in novel situations. So it's a little bit more realistic in that sense. Okay, so we have block practice and we have an interleaved practice. Um, I'm just presenting you what I have found uh, through the reading that I've done and you can choose how you wanna implement or develop your training uh, once you understand these two ideas.